Hey there, welcome everyone to the Credit Card News live stream. I'm Cal Barton. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. So I hope you had a good week so far. Danny, I just want to thank you. Thank you, brother, for the super chat. I really appreciate you supporting the channel. It means a lot to me. So this is a live stream where we talk about the latest in credit card news, what's going on in the past week. And then we have a little discussion about any new goings on in, you know, in your, uh, in your credit card portfolio. If you got any new, uh, sign up bonuses, any new credit limit increases or what have you. So we have some big news this week, something I'm very excited about, and I think you should be too, all right? First up is the new PayPal MasterCard. So this is just an update to the current PayPal card, which is probably, you know, I think it's fallen out of the, um, the limelight uh, since it was first released, you know, a few years ago. Um, so I've had this card, I've just... I've just had it in the sock drawer, so to speak. You know, I've had it in one of these, one of these folders here, one of these uh, binders with all my cards in it. And I've just been keeping this one on the back burner, but here's what you're getting now. You're getting unlimited 3% cash back when paying with PayPal at checkout. And that's online on mobile. So on your phone and in store, this is a big deal. Um, new card customers, will earn a one-time $100 cash bonus on their first 500 in spend. So that's the sign-up bonus. I love those when they just give you a flat, um, you know, multi a couple hundred dollar sign-up bonus right in the beginning. And that's, that's the best way to, uh, that's the best sort of intro offer that you can get with a card. There's no annual fee still, and you get daily cash back. Now, this is something that's not being talked about and I've, I've talked about this in the past with the SoFi credit card and the Apple card both give you daily cash back. And I, I've said in the past that this is a feature that I believe is a future forward feature. This is something that I believe more and more cards you'll see offering this. And I like it, even though I don't use my cash back, um, you know, I use it on a monthly basis, but I do like the ability and, to have access to the money the day after I make the transaction. I really like that. So you're also getting, uh, the current cardholders can access the new features right now. So uh, what I've read is that you'll, you won't get access to the daily cash back or the 3% cash back until everything's live and up and running, but they'll kind of retroactively look at those transactions and give you the 3% back where necessary. So I believe this is possibly the best 2% flat rate card on the market. Really, we don't have anything else like it because you're getting unlimited 3% back on those PayPal purchases. And look, you can get, you can use PayPal for transactions at over a hundred stores online. That includes Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Wayfair, Hotels.com, Airbnb, eBay, and so many more. These are huge. Some of these are Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 100 companies. You know, I, I personally spend a lot at Airbnb. You can spend a thousand a clip just on, you know, on a vacation. And many of you shop at Walmart. So if you're able to get 3% unlimited, there's no restrictions. There's, you know, usually with a 3% bonus you're going to have a certain spend restriction or there's going to be something else tied to that this is unlimited so another thing that you can do i've noticed is that there's a new app that is um it's called the slide app where you can get up to eight percent cash back if you use the uh, paypal mastercard in conjunction with the slide app. So what you would do is you would assign the PayPal MasterCard as your default payment method with 
the uh with paypal and then within the slide app pay via the uh pay via paypal is your payment method and so in the slide app you get an automatic four percent cash back on those gift card purchases that you that they offer you through that slide app you can consider it similar to raise.com or uh, car, uh, any other gift card marketplace. And so you can stack those bonuses up to 8% back at a, at a lot of retailers. And that's going to include um, some, some major ones like I believe Nike and a few others. So this is really going to be, I think this is a game changer. Now, I took a poll between everybody, and I was a little surprised. Uh, it was competitive. Most people uh, thought that this was not the best 2% card on the market. Um, I think here, here's a few things you want to consider. Usually, when you have a, a newer card on the market, they tend to change their rewards setups pretty often, and sometimes the card... Sometimes this is the beginning of the end for cards. I remember when the Uber card changed their uh, their reward setup for the they kind of nerfed it, so they changed it for the worse. And then a year later, they just decided decided to completely do away with the card. This is still at risk of this, and I think that that's the biggest downfall to uh, the PayPal Mastercard is that you don't know what they're going to do a year from now. I think there's a reason why other credit card issuers haven't gone the three percent unlimited route with on a on a card that has no annual fee i think there's a reason why they haven't done that maybe because it's not profitable so this is this is potentially this is a potential red flag but i'm going to utilize this card a lot more now that they changed it for the better and i'm actually surprised because usually with uh many credit cards they they actually bring down the amount of value that they offer you so this is a really pleasant surprise. I will note, and I want to tell Danny, this is this goes out to you, brother. I know Danny has had firsthand experience within the last couple of weeks um, where Synchrony Bank, which is the credit card issuer for the PayPal MasterCard, canceled all of his accounts that he had with that um, with the, with that issuer. So I believe he had four or five different credit cards all got canceled. Um, those seem to be isolated incidents, but I have to always notate that, you know, those types of practices are really concerning and it's something to, to be aware of when you're dealing with Synchrony. So I have a few accounts with Synchrony and that's something that's in the back of my mind. Like, listen, am I going to wake up in the morning and all my accounts are going to be totally, you know, canceled? That's something that I have in my mind. But I'm, I look forward to using this card more. And you guys can let me know in the chat what you think about the new PayPal MasterCard. What do you think about that? So moving right along. Next story. U.S. lawmakers introduce e-cash bill in new push to create a digital dollar. A group of U.S. lawmakers says the U.S. Treasury Department may be the right government entity to create a digital dollar, not the Federal Reserve. A new bill introduced Monday would authorize just that. Four congressional Democrats introduced the Electronic Currency and Secure Hardware Act, also known as eCash, to direct the Treasury Secretary to develop and issue an electronic version of the U.S. dollar with an eye to preserving privacy and anonymity in transactions. The electronic dollar as defined in the bill would be a bearer instrument that people could hold on their phone or card. The system would be token-based, not account-based, meaning if someone were to lose their phone or card, they would lose the funds. In other words, it would be like losing a wallet with dollar bills in it. So I just want to say just a little slightly off topic that don't you love when they take kind of a complex idea and they said, you know, we need a, a really concise and easy to understand acronym they call this a backronym there's a technical term for this a backronym so they eCash is one of those where they just said we have a long list of of words word soup word salad and we just got to make it make sense so let's put some simple words to this and 
you know, and, and, and make it an acronym so we can just put it in a headline. I just think that's funny. Next up, we have buy now, pay later, expanding to storefronts and gas pumps. Buy now, pay later. The and listen, this might be <laughs> this might be more needed than uh, in past years. You know how the the prices at the pumps have gone through the roof late lately. Some people have joked that you need to put your gas on layaway or you need to make payments on your filling up your gas tank. So buy now, pay later. The traditionally online finance not financing option that allows consumers to pay off their purchases and installments is making the pivot to also be available in stores and at gas pumps. Uh, Buy Now Pay Later has become increasingly popular in recent years and expected to reach $680 billion, with a B in transaction volume across the world by 2025. Some Buy Now Pay Later companies have begun offering their services for in-store transactions, among them in Buy Now Pay Later provider uh, Klarna, who in late February, announced a multi-year partnership with Brookfield Properties, a global real estate developer and operator to bring its payments to Brookfield portfolio of more than 150 shopping centers in the U.S. So, you know, I don't really have much uh, interest in buy now, pay later, other than if, if there's a large purchase that I'm looking to make, sometimes it, if they offer a no interest period, six months, 12 months, you know, 24 months, that I can spread that uh, you know, that purchase amount over, you know, if you're, if you're buying a ref, uh, expensive appliances or what have you, this could be a good option. I, there, there was talks that buy now, pay later would eat into the credit card industry. I don't, I feel like those are, these products are far, they're, they're too different to, to really directly compete with one another. So, um, you know, there, there's no buy now, pay later that I'm aware of that offers cash back or any, you know, some sort of reward system. And um, they're just two different products. Next, we have Banks Way using Zelle to challenge Visa and MasterCard. Banks are debating a plan to bring Zelle to the checkout at big retailers. Some banks want to expand it to retail payments. The money transfer service boomed during the pandemic when people avoided ATMs and replaced cash and checks with digital money transfers. Zelle recorded some 1.8 billion transactions in 2021, totaling 490 billion, both more than double their pre-pandemic levels. So listen, I know Zelle is, Zelle is really catching on. I, this is the, uh, the service that the major banks have, you know, they created to transfer money between one another. This could be really good if you're trying to make a very large purchase. Um, I find myself using a lot of, uh, you know, similar apps like Cash App or Venmo or what have you. And um, unfortunately, you know, the, my primary bank, and this is one of the faults of SoFi, is that you don't have access to Zelle and a lot of uh, contractors. And if you're trying to do a repair or you're trying to do an update or uh, remodel to your house, they're going to want to take Zelle and... Um, this is good. I think this is good overall. You let me know what you think about this one. Next, we have Apple. Apple working on first party financial services under a code name Breakout. That's an interesting code name there. Apple is currently developing new technology and infrastructure to bring a wide range of financial services for consumers in house, reducing its reliance on outside partners. The multi-year plan is said to include payment processing, risk assessment, fraud analysis, credit checks, and additional customer service functions. Part of the project has been dubbed by the internal codename Breakout. Currently, the project is focused on future Apple financial products and not current ones. Apple relies on third-party financial companies like Goldman Sachs uh, for services related to Apple Card and its own financing programs. So here are a few of my thoughts here. Um, this is going to save if, if they go through with this and they end up, you know, if this uh, matures into an actual part of their business, it's going to save them a lot of money in the long run. Um, so if, if, as soon as you start basically taking over the functions of the, the, the companies that you contract with, like Goldman Sachs and also like Citizen One, who they have their uh, 
their iPhone upgrade program with. They actually do the uh, analysis, the credit analysis and the financing for for that program. If they bring those things in house and they know they no longer need those third party companies, then that's going to save them money and potentially that's going to save the consumer money. If, if that ends up trickling down, those savings can trickle down to the consumer level. So this is a good thing for definitely for Apple, really good for us, potentially, and really bad for those third party companies. They should really be uh, very tentative and, um, and, and know that maybe five years down the line, they're not going to have a huge contract with the largest company on the planet right now. Next, again, this is uh, involving Apple. Aiden, which is a company um, based out of it's in Europe. Aiden's adding tap to pay to iPhones by the end of this year. Dutch payments group Aiden has teamed up with Apple to bring tap to pay to iPhones for US customers later this year, allowing them to accept contactless payments on their mobile devices without adding other hardware or payment terminals Tap to pay on iPhones enables businesses to accept contactless payments using the iPhone X, a XS, or later, and a supporting app, including payments via Apple Pay, contactless credit, or debit cards, or other digital wallets. Um, so this is going to directly re uh, compete with Square. And I believe Square recently changed their name to Block, but you know the Square readers. This is going to directly uh, compete with that. And so, and it also not only will it directly compete. It's going to be very well integrated into the Apple ecosystem. It's going to work natively with iPhones. You're not going to be required to have some sort of third party, you know, um, hardware accessory to accept credit card payments or debit card payments. This is going to be great for, you know, people working a food truck or if you have a small, you know, pop up stand in the mall or what, what do you, you do is the flea market, what have you. This is going to be great for you. And you, you notice a trend here, um, and Apple did this with uh, with with their AirTags. There was a company called Tile that was was doing relatively well for you know over five years. And Apple said, you know what, we're gonna take that market from you. And they made the AirTags, and they're stronger. They work with the iPhone better with our with all their products. And basically, they're killing that that market for for that startup company which is tile and so you can see a trend here apple is working with third-party companies to get these new features and services up and running and then eventually saying we're going to eventually compete and then kill you off we're going to we're either we're going to buy that company or we're just going to release our own version of what that what features th that company offers and get rid of them. So I'd be very uh, I'd be on edge if I was making you know hardware products for Apple. I, you definitely don't want to put all your eggs in that basket. And this, Apple has shown a track record track record of doing that. And um, yeah, those last two stories definitely bear that out. Next up, we have Cash App users can now invest their paychecks into Bitcoin. Um, U.S. customers of Cash App, a mobile payment service run by Block, formerly Square, will be able to automatically invest a portion of the entirety of their direct deposit paychecks into Bitcoin. The feature called Paid in Bitcoin allows Cash App's clients with activated cash cards via debit cards connected to the service to have a percentage of their direct deposits automatically inverted converted into Bitcoin at no cost. Customers can choose to have their deposits converted from as little as 1% to 100% um, to Bitcoin with the ability to reconfigure at any time. So listen, this I think this is one of those features that kind of makes headlines, but it really doesn't make mu much of a difference. And, you know, a lot of uh, other services or other uh, banks and um, fintech companies offer this feature already. It's, you know, it just kind of saves you a step. You know, I love automation, but um, 
you know, you can already invest a certain percentage every week with like SoFi. And I believe you can do that with many other apps. So it's technically it, it takes that percentage from your, your direct deposit. So it can identify your check when it's deposited into your account. But this is just a kind of a technical kind of a technicality there. Um, so as you know, I'm not big on Bitcoin. Uh, I think it's still in its infancy, you know, crypt, I think the technology of crypto is something that's going to, you know, be important in the future. It's, it's likely to be important, but I don't think it's something that you have to start getting into uh, currently. That's just my uh, perspective on it. And um, also we have Wayfair.com now sells third-party gift cards. And um, it will include retailers like Airbnb, Uber, Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, Southwest, uh, Airlines, Delta, Hotels.com, Disney, and more. Um, this should be an interesting new way of getting various gift cards at discount, utilizing an Amex offer, a Chase offer, or similar offers like that. Um, and so hopefully these gift cards will work to trigger those offers um, from those credit card issuers. So you guys, let me know, um, have you had any uh, new updates to your credit card accounts? Have you had any credit limit increases that we got to celebrate? Have you got it approved for any new credit cards in the past? You know, I w it really makes me feel good to hear about, you know, uh, success stories. You know, my recent video where, you know, uh, you could upgrade your platinum, your Capital One Platinum card to a Quicksilver card. You know, there's a lot of people who aren't, you know, weren't earning any rewards on their card did now are earning 1.5% back. And I love to hear about, um, you know, people getting, uh, getting their upgrades and being able to earn some money back. And also some of the people had a capital one Quicksilver one card that had a $39 annual fee. And, you know, I'm dead against annual fees. And so there's really no reason you should have to pay that. There's so many great cards out there that are free of charge with a zero and zero dollar annual fee. Danny, congrats, man. Oh, wow. Good job on that. Congrats on getting the new Amex everyday card. Jorge, what's up, man? Welcome back to the stream. EHJ, man, if you're still here, welcome back to the stream, man. It's good to have you back. I love you. You like the beats? That's what, listen, that's why I play him, man. So you can have a, a good vibe, you know, to the stream. Leon King, man, congrats, dude. Congratulations on that upgrade, man.
Yeah, Bruce Wayne, man. Welcome back to the stream. Um, so if do you still have that uh Quicksilver card with the 39 annual fee? Um it's it's really it's important to know that if you listen, if you have a decent credit file and your, your credit report is pretty filled out, then you're not gonna have a problem canceling a card because it doesn't immediately fall off your report. It takes um if it if it's canceled in good standing, it takes 10 years to actually fall off your credit report. So you're not going to see any sort of immediate uh, negative impact uh, unless it was a significant portion of your available credit limit. So listen, it's, it's easy to, I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel any qualms right, uh, with canceling a car, especially if I had an annual fee. Um, but I usually keep, any card that doesn't have an annual fee, I'll just keep it around. I'll just, you know, sock drawer it or what have you. Yeah, really good point, Nino. So, um, Nino, you're saying you canceled seven cars in recent months and your credit score is is the same or there's been no there's no hit, no negative impact to your score. So everybody just uh, pay attention to that. I, I see that's a really big issue in the community is that people are very uh, wary and leery about canceling cards and they, they just don't understand that they already have enough time in and if you already have multiple credit cards and you have a decent size available credit limit, then you're not really going to see a negative impact if you cancel a card. And it really doesn't make sense to have something that doesn't provide value for you and it's costing you money or it's costing you peace of mind. If there's a card that I don't, it, there might be some other issue with the card that it's, you know, I think Danny, you wanted to kind of clean up so that you didn't have anything lingering that, you know, any accounts that, um, yeah, that you had to do housekeeping on. So just go ahead and cancel it. Get it out of here. Oh, Danny, it's a good question. When am I going to get the Apple card? Man, when I get an iPhone, when I get a, and that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So um, I'm just going to continue to cover it. I look at it. It's a work of art. It's, uh, it, you know, uh, it's very popular. Hopefully they, they make some sort of big update to the Apple card. I'm, I'm hoping that they update it in some major way. Are they uh, start expanding internationally? I know a lot of people wanted to come to Canada and Europe and stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to cover it. I don't necessarily have to have it. I have a lot of cards already, so I don't need it. Yeah, Danny, I, listen. I definitely agree. They they it's been so long since they updated the car with new they've had the same what eight um three percent merchants for the past year or so. It's it's really time to for a refresh. I agree with that. And it's also time for a uh, an update to the SoFi car. You know, they, they came strong out the gate. You know, I, I like having two percent back, but when you have cars like the new PayPal car, uh the new updated version of the PayPal car. It gives you 3% back on all PayPal purchases. And, and you can you can use PayPal at a wide range of companies. Um, and listen, you gotta you gotta step it up to the next uh to the next level. It's 2022 now, right? So we need we need some better features.
Ellen Beck, welcome to the stream. Very kind words. And this this goes for everyone in this in the chat right now. And uh, you know, for get you know, helping each other out. I love that dynamic to the community. And so he says, enjoying the community. The information is helping me and others uh be better and achieving great things. Thanks to all. And I, I learn a lot from you guys. You know, when when I see I'm constantly looking at discussions at message boards, trying to figure out this, you know this whole credit card journey and it's uh it's really a, a huge learning experience yep yeah that's one that's one big thing it's uh danny you're right uh so far they need to offer some credit limit increases i i would love it if they started offering that so i could just go ahead and deep dive and figure out get some data points so i could you know make a video on it I, i'm dying to make another SoFi video, but they're just not doing anything new yet. And yeah, I would love a credit limit increase. Yeah, Leon, um, Leon says, do you have any opinions on Fidelity's rewards Visa credit card? It's a 2% card, I, which I, I like that. And it incentivizes you to reinvest your uh, reward i think that's the only way to get the full two percent is to reinvest that into your uh brokerage account so I, I think it's it's great you know i like having flexibility myself to you know for to use it as a statement credit or to put directly into my checking checking account so i would prefer that over you know because you can easily just you know with the sofi car for example just take the earnings and just throw it into your brokerage account that way um, so I, I will always prioritize, um, you know, freedom and, and choice over something that's going to restrict you to one uh, redemption method. But I'm I'm good with a two percent card. That the, that's the that's the basis of, you know, I believe any good cashback strategy. So I, I like it. Yeah, you know, Nino, actually, um, he's, Nino, you're saying SoFi doesn't have Zelle, and that's a no-no. Yeah, I actually run into that problem fairly frequently when I'm trying to do, and I always mention the updates too, because I'm doing, you know, renovations and remodels to the house, and a lot of contractors, they just take Zelle. They prefer that, and I think it's for, like, tax reasons. I'm not exactly sure, but I can't use, uh, it kind of puts me in a bind because I can't you know, directly use SoFi for that purpose. So I, I, I see where you're coming from. DJ Bruce Wayne, I didn't forget about you. Um, you said, how about the Chase business, ca business cash card? Any thoughts? Um, I don't know much about that card. I, I don't want to speak on it. You know, if I don't have the, the right information, but um, as far as like business credit cards, the one I do know a little bit about is the Capital One Spark card. And I know that gives you 2% back. Um, so, and, and it has, it, it's actually a charge card. I like that aspect. Um, so I, I need to delve deeper into the business card, you know, catalog and, and, and learn more about that before I speak on it. You know, something I learned recently, and I, I, I wish I, I want to navigate to this guy's setup. I had a really cool, I just want to run this setup by you, okay? And I, this is kind of off the cuff here. Let me see if I can get this done. Hold 
one, guys. I want you guys to see this real quick. All right, so I want to direct you guys over to this uh, this uh, Reddit post here. He says, what is your complicated car setup to utilize as much cash back as possible? And uh, uh, Nino, I, I want to point you out here because I know that you are, uh, I, I know that your philosophy on cars is, is a simpler strategy. You want to use two to three cards to, you know, I, I, you're really big on the chase trifecta. But I thought this was really interesting because he's trying to eke out every single percentage point that he can out of strictly cashback cards. And here's what he's using. The US Bank Altitude Go for restaurants, you get 4% back. The US Bank Cash Plus for utilities, internet, and streaming, you get 5% cash back. He has a second, which I didn't know this before seeing this post, that you can have a second U.S. Bank Cash Plus card. I have one of those. Um, you can get a uh, five percent back on uh, for his cell phone uh, uh, bill. He has the Ducks Unlimited for gas and sporting goods. There's some overlap here for the um, for gas because you can. But he's getting five percent get back cash back there. The Capital One Walmart card for groceries get five percent back. And uh, here's another. Let's see, Amazon Visa for uh, for your Amazon purchases. Uh, you got the Best Buy card. And so here's the Best Buy card is interesting because I have this card. I don't use it much. You know, normally I'll use it a little bit around the holiday season. But once you spend over like $1,500, you get to the next tier. And I believe it's $3,000. Once you spend that amount, you start earning 6% back um, on your Best Buy purchases and you become an Elite Plus member. Um, you get the Lowe's card, you, you're getting 5% off. And I love when you have a card, it's more like a discount card. It's not cash back. And I believe this is superior. You're getting 5% off right at purchase. And so there's uh, Target has a card like this. Oh, the next one is Target. Um, and B&H Photo, which, uh, which has a lot of camera equipment and music equipment, you get, it's basically a discount card is what I like to call it. So that's that works for you there. And then you get city custom cash. Now, this is a big pro tip. You can have seemingly un, it, it, there's there doesn't seem seem to be a hard limit to how many city custom cash cards that you can have. And so this guy has that this guy has three of them. He's getting five percent back in three different categories of his choice. And so he's, he's using it for groceries. He's using it for travel and for home improvement or pharmacy or whatever else he wants to do. And the, the really huge thing about this is that um, it the you get 5% back in your top spending category and that can change from month to month. And it's it's completely up to you where that, uh, what five, what, what category you're earning that 5% in. And also using, he's using the Capital One Saver One card, not to be confused with the Capital One Saver card, which gets you 4% back, but it comes with a $95 annual fee. And I actually had that card, but I had to cancel it because I don't believe in annual fees. Those, those eat right into your, um, into your bottom line. And here you got the last one on the list, the PayPal MasterCard, the new and improved updated, getting you 3% back on PayPal purchases. This is a huge list of cards, but I, I really like where he's going with this. Very you know, very complex, maybe even, you know, more, more complex than I would like, but it's, it's cool to see how, how far you can go to earn as much cash back as possible. You know, yep.
Oh, that's cool. You guys, uh, I see, you know, you mentioned the um, Discover It card. Anyone utilizing Discover It for Target and gas stations um, to get that uh, Q2, quarter two, 5% category. My next video is going to be on the Discover It card. And basically, it's going to cover how to always earn the full quarterly bonus. So how to max out your quarterly bonus every single time. So that's what I'm going to be kind of diving into the best practices and, you know, some of the uh, strategies people have implemented to make that happen. Because sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to get uh, get useful use out of a category or a store that earns a bonus rate that you don't you don't go to that you don't frequent. <clears throat> Bruce Wayne, you're saying Chase needs to revamp the Freedom Unlimited card. A good and it's a good card and it's due for an update. You know, I'm not I'm not sure. I, I like that. I think the freedom card is very, uh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good card. I have the freedom card. Uh, I like that you're uh, that they offer the 1.5% flat rate. So you're automatically at level playing field with the long, longstanding capital one Quicksilver card. And then you get the 3% categories at uh, drugstores, dining, uh, and delivery. And, um, so that's just a bonus. You're getting 3% back unlimited in those places. Uh, I think I'm not sure that they need to revamp it, you know, especially because on the, on the, it's, I, you would call the sister card, the freedom flex, you're getting the ro rotating bonus category system they have. I don't really see how you, how you make that better without kind of outshining the freedom flex card. Hey guys, I really appreciate you uh, voting in the poll. It definitely, um, definitely makes a difference. I, I'm thankful for that. I, I didn't notice. <laughs> I, I listen. I didn't. I didn't notice any flexing. I, I'm not, definitely not trying. <laughs> yeah, um, Danny. Any? Um, you're saying any cards that I've been eyeing? Um, honestly, I I was eyeing the two cards that I was eyeing, which was the City Custom Cash and the U.S. Bank Cash Plus card. I have them now. Um, if I'm gonna tell you what. If this new PayPal MasterCard was a completely new card that you had to, you know, reapply for, I would be eyeing that because, um, you know, I really like the 3% unlimited 3% uh, cashback rate. Um, at the moment, no, there's, there's nothing that I can think of. Uh, there was that card that, that combines that you can use to combine your credit cards into one card and it comes with like a with an app 
I, I forgot the name of that. Maybe if somebody can let me know in the chat, but I, I like that idea. It's probably not going to be executed properly, but I do like the idea of being able to condense all my credit cards into one, you know, basically a virtual card and then go into an app and just pick which one I want to. Um, it has a feature where you can retroactively uh, assign different transactions to different credit cards. So you, you don't have to even think about at the time of purchase, you can just, you know, pick a day out of the month and say, uh, and, and use that to organize all your transactions to get the, the maximum cash back rate. That would be a really, uh, that'd be a game changer. I like, I like being a beta tester a little, you know, some of the time, a good portion of the time. What cards are you guys looking uh, forward to? Oh, S Lee, what's what's up? Welcome to the stream, S Lee. I hope I, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, U.S. Bank Cash Plus is looking sweet. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree, and I like that. Um, there, even though you have to activate the categories, which I don't like that part because I like um, to I like everything to be um, pretty automated. I would say. I like that they're consistent pretty much year in and year out year out they're going to have the same categories and um they're one of the only cars that offer that uh that that higher bonus rate in the utilities uh department so in the, in the utilities category you can earn five percent back and listen i'm paying a lot in you know I'm, i live in the northeast and i'm i'm paying for oil for heating in the winter and the electric bill can go high in the in the uh summertime for ac and so that's going to be um you know a, a card that i can see myself using a lot in the future i'm just going to set that up on auto pay for uh the uh, for the u.s cash plus card for my electricity bill and my oil heating bill and that's gonna that's gonna work well i, I can i can tell that All right, Nino, man, thank you. Really appreciate that, man. Thank you for the super chat. We're baking, <laughs> bacon, egg, and cheese in the manana. Thank, I appreciate that. I'm, I, I'm gonna have to uh, order up a nice uh, bagel or something. You know, maybe I'll get a bagel with uh, bacon and an egg on it. Oh, Danny, you're saying I'm hoping for T-Mobile and Lyft to have their own credit cards. Just praying they won't be back by synchrony. Listen, I would not ban I would not hold my breath on that because, you know, synchrony is is the credit card issuer. They must offer the best like deal or because they, they've chosen to make their lane. Their portion of the market is going to be co-branded cards. Everybody seems to flock to them. To, to do their their co-branded card uh it's it's amazing so they, they kind of cornered that market oh man bruce wayne <laughs> thank you man that's very unexpected i appreciate you supporting the channel thank you thank you guys it's here's uh yeah here's the coffee yes i definitely listen i had my coffee before the stream i wish i had some more right now Dude, it's it definitely puts me um into uh makes me i would say my best the best version of myself it really picks me up love that coffee all right <laughs> danny <laughs> daddy thank you thank you brother i appreciate that man you don't have to for red bull i listen I, I i don't drink red bulls but maybe i will get one just because you recommended it thank you
All right, Nino, man, thank. I uh, really appreciate the the kind words. Um, you know, I always say that it's it's a little it's a little tough to to kind of go out in my my regular life and just kind of this it's kind of doesn't exist. But it's good to know. I know there's real people on the other side of this internet connection, and um, I appreciate you guys sharing these these moments with me. I know you love. Uh, we have the same passion for. Uh, credit cards and earning some cash on the side, some rewards on the side. So um, really appreciate uh, you hanging out with me. Well, listen, guys, I can't, I cannot top this. Cheryl, welcome to the stream. Thank you for, uh, uh, for coming up to the front. Really good to um, have you on the stream. I don't think we talked before. Welcome to the live stream. Good to have you. Ellen Beck says Wakanda forever. Yes. Wakanda forever. Love that. Yes. Well, guys, I, I don't think I can top that. Um, the Wakanda forever is just like a really good place to uh, to end it all. Cheryl, you usually watch quietly. Okay. Listen, that's, um, I, you can watch quietly. That's great too. But if you, if you want to chat it up and, you know, give your feedback, some input, I will definitely, you know, uh, love to have it. And, um, I'll, I'll give you the feedback and any information that I know. And, um, yeah. Esli, you say, is the city double cash card dead? I don't think it's dead. Um, I, I just product changed from a city double cash to the to to get a second city custom cash card. Um, it's a, I believe it was the first kind of um, really mainstream two percent cashback card. I believe it might have been the first. I know it's the most popular. So I don't I don't see that as being dead. I haven't seen any sort of rhetoric that said that that particular car is dead or is dying. But um, guys, it's a good place to stop. Thank you for um, sharing the stream with me. I'll be back next week at 7 p.m. And listen, you'll, we'll, uh, we'll meet again. Y'all have a great week. 